can explain how they came you are far from grace we are labor has failed receive grace to succeed what connection could not do for you receive grace to get it the doors that we are shut against you a grace will open the doors hallelujah go ahead give jesus praise in the building tonight give to the king of kings the lord of lords the lion of the tribe of judah go ahead give him praise tonight hallelujah hallelujah somebody shout a great amen, amen. well i want to celebrate the set man of this house and our mama tonight for the opportunity given to me thank you sir for having me come i want to We want to sincerely thank you for giving us strength, being an example for us to continue to emulate, to continue to copy, being a source of inspiration and great strength to us. Sir. I truly want to say thank you again for being there for us. Let's celebrate our big daddy and our, our big mommy. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you for trusting me tonight with this exalted pulpit. I will do justice by the grace of God. I want to celebrate Pastor Paul. Good to see you. Thank you for what you're doing for the body. Apostle Victor James. Let's celebrate this great man of God. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands to heaven and pray in tongues for a few seconds, everybody. Ele bozakla nam brofre genenge gele bozakra na ganga le boroso kelene mahaha Ele bozakra takala na boza tanda le borose kelene mo Mengrete kele de bozakra na ganga le bolo bolo bozete le de bo Membra takala na moza tanangre de ke bozakala Bebere gele bozota le na moha Thank you my father Blessed be your holy name In the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord, tonight that your presence is already in this place. Thank you that your word that goes forth shall not come back void. Thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost opens the understanding of your people tonight. So I decree that revelation will flow freely in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is not planted by God, I command it to be rooted out. I destroy the root of sickness and disease and everything that is contrary to redemption in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for glorifying Jesus among us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody says amen like thunder. Please just raise your right hand to heaven with me and let's say these words together. I believe the word of God. It is final authority in my life. In spite of my circumstances, in spite of my situation, I believe the word of God. I am what God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I receive revelation. And I declare, by the end of this service... I will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. And if you believe it, shout a powerful amen. amen. Clap those hands and celebrate as you take your beautiful seats tonight. Glory to God forevermore. I'm reading from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. The word of God tells us, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, the Hagios Graphe, or the sacred writings, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures are able to make you wise in the issues of salvation. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. 
Oh, the Bible tells us, she shall bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save. The gospel brings a man to a destination called salvation. It says the scriptures are given to us to make us wise in the issues of salvation. All scripture, that's the next verse, is given by inspiration or God breath. And the scriptures are profitable in the issues of doctrine. They are profitable for doctrine. Doctrine means learning. The scriptures are profitable for learning, for doctrine. The scriptures are profitable for reproof. The word reproof means evidence. That is to say that the scriptures forms the basis for our evidence. That is to say, whatever does not align with scripture, it's not to be taken serious. You had a dream and the dream does not agree with scriptures, put it under a bed and throw it away. Or you had an experience that does not agree with the evidence of scripture, you throw it away. Somebody told me of somebody who said she died, went to heaven, and I mean, when she went to heaven, she discovered that so many women are going to be in hell because of certain things that they did not do on earth. And then I checked my Bible and I found out that the Bible tells us that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not who does something, but who believes in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there is no way that vision aligns with the scripture. So what do you do? You put it away. Because if it does not agree with scripture, it cannot form our reproof. It cannot form our evidence. All scripture is given for, for, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. That is to say, when the scriptures are being communicated to us, we must keep our minds in a state where we are ready to make adjustments. We are ready to make corrections because when the teaching of God's word comes, correction takes place at the moment when God's word is being taught. So the scriptures are given to us for correction. And then the last one, for instructions in righteousness. So right there, Apostle Paul gives us borderlines for the purpose of the body of truth called the scriptures. All scriptures. Now, the scriptures in this context will refer to Genesis to Malachi. Because when Paul said all scripture, there was no book of Timothy. Jesus speaking in John chapter 5 verse 39. He said, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and the scriptures are they which testify of me. That is to say that the message of the scriptures is Jesus. The scriptures testify of him. Now when Jesus said that, there was no John. So the scriptures in the Bible will refer to Genesis to Malachi. So Matthew to Revelation is not called the scriptures. So what is Matthew to Revelation called? The book of Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Romans 16 25 gives us what that is called. It says, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. The revelation of the mystery. The revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. And the next verse says, next verse, but now is manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God. Now, the mystery is revealed. So the New Testament is called the revelation of the scriptures. The Old Testament is called the scriptures. Now, I have news for you. 
So if the Old Testament is called the scriptures, where is the Old Testament? The Old Testament is not Genesis to Malachi. It is Exodus to Malachi. Because in the Bible, when the Bible talks about the Old Testament, the book of Genesis is not inclusive. How do we know that? Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. God speaking through apostle, the writer of Hebrews. In Hebrews 8, 8 he says, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand. To lead them out of the land of Egypt. So, it means the Old Testament begins from Exodus. When God took Israel by the hand out of Egypt. That is the beginning of the Old Covenant. So, the Old Covenant is Exodus to Malachi. So, what is Genesis? Jesus speaking in John, Matthew, I mean Matthew chapter, nine, chapter 19. He said, Moses asks you to give a certificate of divorce... Because of the hardness of your heart. But in the beginning, it was not so. So Genesis is called the beginning. Exodus to Malachi, Old Testament. And then Matthew to Revelation, New Testament. But Matthew to Revelation is not the total New Testament. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are not New Testament. How do we know that? The Bible tells us Jesus speaking in Matthew 26, 28. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. So until there was blood, there was no New Testament. Oh, the book of Hebrews tells us where a testament is, there must of necessity be the death of the testator for a testament is only of force after men are dead. So it was the death of Christ that gave us the New Testament. So the New Testament is not a book. The New Testament is blood. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. So New Testament begins from Acts. Because Acts of the Apostle tells us, after his resurrection, after his resurrection, so by Acts he has shed his blood. So what is Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are historical books recording the humanity of Jesus. It is in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John that we know that Jesus was tired. That's where we know that Jesus wept. That's why we know that Jesus was hungry. That's why we know that Jesus slept. That's why we know that Jesus cried. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John is a record of the historic account of the humanity of Jesus. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. So let's go over it again. Genesis, beginning. Exodus to Malachi, Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John... Historic books of the humanity of Jesus. Acts to Revelation. The revelation of the scriptures are the New Testament. So, Old Testament, Jesus concealed. New Testament, Jesus revealed. So, when you read the Old Testament, you will never see Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -E but the whole New Testament is Badoga Monaka. The whole Old Testament is pointers, pointers, types, shadows, promises, prophecies pointing to Jesus. You won't see Jesus there because he's concealed. That's why it's called mystery. But the New Testament, you will see Jesus. So, how do you understand the Old Testament? You understand the Old Testament by reading the New Testament because the New Testament is the decoder of the codes of the Old Testament. So when you read the Old New Testament, you will understand what the prophets, the prophets, and all the people who came in the Old Testament were trying to do. So let's get a practical account. Luke chapter 24 verse 25. Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart 
to believe all that the prophets take note of all. All that the prophets have spoken. So Jesus is about to give us a download of the, of the message of the prophets. Major prophets, minor prophets, all that the prophets have spoken. What did they speak? Next verse. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So the prophecies of Isaiah, the prophecies of Jeremiah, Amos, Obadiah, Nehum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Zephaniah, all that they were trying to say from different directions was the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Every type, every shadow, every symbol had one message. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Look at verse 27. 27. And beginning at Moses. When you read the Bible and you see beginning at Moses. He's talking about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So Jesus decided to have Bible study with them. And he took them from the beginning. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Beginning at Moses. And in, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He is the message of the Bible. The Bible doesn't have messages. The Bible has a message. The Bible is a Christocentric book. And carries with it a Christocentric message. It is the message of Jesus. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. That's why Jesus is called the word of God. Revelation 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when you read the Bible and you can't see Jesus, you have no read. Because everywhere you read is Jesus, the grace of God. Am I communicating? If you're catching, shout, I hear you. He expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He didn't expound to them all of the scriptures. He expounded the things concerning himself. He's the message. Outside Jesus, no message. If you take Jesus out of the Bible, you have a Quran. What makes the Bible Bible is Jesus in the Bible. I don't know who I'm talking to here. If you're hearing me shout, I hear you. I prophesy to the first 1,000 people that will shout amen. You are moving into manifestation. You're moving into manifestation. You're moving into manifestation. You're moving into manifestation. Somebody shout fire. Sit down, cross your leg, shout, I'm in charge. Aya. Aya. From Moses, through the prophets, hey, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, Kaboda, every part of the scripture is Jesus. Anywhere you read, whether in codes, in types, in shadows, whatever area, it was all an attempt to reveal Jesus. Uh, Hebrews tells us, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, diverse manners means types and shadows, spoke to the fathers by the prophets, that's Old Testament, have in these last days, that's New Testament, spoken to us by his son. Not he will speak, he has spoken. Jesus is God's last word. After Jesus, there's no more word. He's God's last word. Ah, he is the logos of God. Ayo. He is the logos of God. Logos means he's the thought, the idea. He's the reason behind. For by him were all things made. And for him and through him, all things exist. So without him, nothing. Why? He's the center of it all. Jesus is our rest. Eh? 
Rest is not a season. Rest is not a day. Rest is not a year. Rest is a person. Jesus. Agabo Shaka. Hey, we that believe, we enter into rest. When you enter Christ, wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice, I command your rest to manifest. If your amen is louder, I command your rest to manifest. Manifest in your life. Manifest in your family. Manifest in your career. Somebody shout fire. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Before Jesus came, sir, Jesus said, come unto me. All in that labor and a heavy learning, I will give you what? He said, there remained therefore a rest for the people of God. We that believe, we enter. We don't walk to enter. We believe to enter. Because if there's a man to believe, there's a God to perform. For unto she that believeth, there shall be a performance. Do I have a believer in the house? We that believe, we enter into rest. Then he said, if Joshua had given them rest, he wouldn't have spoken of another day. He wouldn't have spoken of another day. So Joshua was a type of Jesus. It was a typology. Oh my goodness. It was a type. So that's why whatever Joshua did was a drama of the real. It's like Isaac is not the seed of Abraham. Isaac is not the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham is Christ. But Isaac was a typology. That's why on Mount Moriah, when Isaac was to be slaughtered, God said, no, 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 no. Time never reach. Let me use preaching English. Time never reach. Uh, uh, remove Isaac first. Let the real thing come in the place of Isaac. I'm not, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Jesus speaking said, Abraham saw my days. We are on Mount Moriah. When there was a substitution in the place of Isaac, the ram died. In the place of Abel, Christ died. He took my place. I took his place. He died. I live. He was rejected. I'm accepted. He became sin. I'm righteous. He went to hell. I go to heaven. Am I talking to somebody here? Lift your leg. Shout fire. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I feel this thing in this building. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever is stopping your rest tonight is terminated. In all the scriptures, he expounded unto them the things concerning Jesus is the message. Ha, verse 44 of Luke 24. Verse 44. Jesus speaking to them, he said, and he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, but you couldn't understand it. I kept trying to explain, but you couldn't catch it. You lacked the capacity, the ability, and the strength. You couldn't handle it. Because you see, when Jesus died, the, the apostles thought he was a martyr. They thought the death of Christ was a martyr because they didn't understand. They didn't know it was a substitution. They thought he was a martyr. They thought they were just killing a good man. But they didn't know that that death was their death. It was a substitutionary sacrifice. He took their place so they can take his place. God made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? That we who knew sin might be made. I did nothing. I just believe I am righteous. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are hearing shout, I hear you. So one day the disciples came to Jesus and said, what must we do that we may walk the works of God? We want to do something. Hey, give us 20 steps to making it. Give us 15 steps. Jesus said, you don't need steps. I am the door. You can't be with the door and be looking for steps. This is the work of God that you believe. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made. Am I communicating? These are the words. I spoke to you while I was yet with you. Put it up for me. 
44, 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. God punished the devil. <laughs> eh? That all things must be fulfilled. Listen carefully. Jesus is the fulfillment of the scriptures. We are not here to fulfill scriptures. Eh? Jesus is the fulfillment. He fulfilled it. We are here to enjoy the outcome, the effects of the fulfilled scriptures. That's why all the promises of God are in him. They are in him. Everything God promised is in him. Yes, fulfilled. Amen, fulfilled. So when you are in him, you are in the promises. Fulfilled. Now you don't come into Christ and be looking for promises. You come in and harvest. You come in and harvest. We are the harvesting generation. I don't know who I'm talking to here. We are the harvesting generation. Lift your hands and shout, I harvest. Somebody shout it again, I harvest. I declare to the first 1,000 whose amen will come like thunder. I declare your harvest manifest. Harvest manifest. I say manifest. I say manifest. Oh. While I was yet with you, these are the things I told you. But you didn't understand. What were the things? Put it up for me. Verse, verse 44. That all things must be fulfilled. Which we are written in the law of Moses. So that means everything Moses was tamarin to say was Christ. Everything. All is tamarin. He was just trying to say, good, good. Sacrifice. High priest. Once, 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 every year. Good, good. He was trying to say, Christ, Christ. Christ, but it was not given to him because Moses was a dead man. All of them were dead. Moses was dead. Abraham was dead. Even Adam was dead. And as dead men, the best they could communicate was in types and shadows. They couldn't give us reality. That's why you can't see reality in the old. But when you look at the new, you can see what they were trying to say in the old with the eyes of the new. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody the law of Moses. Put it up for me. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms. Concerning me. Jesus is saying look I am the message. Outside me no message. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. All that the prophets. The blood on the doorpost. Was Christ. That animal they killed. And splashed blood. It was not whether you were Jewish or Egyptian. Anywhere there is blood, the angel of death will pass. So if a Jewish man doesn't put blood, the angel will wipe him out. If an Egyptian put blood, the angel will pass. It's not about Jew or Egyptian. It's about blood. It's neither Jew nor Greek nor Gentile, but Christ. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. The brazen serpent was all Christ. And all the people are required to do was to look. He didn't tell them to do anything. He just said, look, look. When the snakes are biting you, look up. As long as you're looking, you won't die. It doesn't matter how many snakes are biting you. Let them keep biting. Just keep looking. As long as you're looking, you won't die. As we behold the glory of the Lord, as in a mirror, we are changed into that same image by the Spirit of the Lord from glory. We leave the glory of Moses and enter the glory of Christ. You are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities? Somebody shout, I'm complete. In him. In him. Outside him, you're on your own. In him, you're complete. Paul said, and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of Christ. It's all about Jesus. This is all about Jesus. Jesus is the message. We have messages. We have message. Jesus is the message of the scripture. Sir, the problem of the church is there are too many messages preached that the church doesn't know the message. Too many messages. Today is 
who stole my wedding gown. Tomorrow is who tied my goat. Next tomorrow is too many messages that the message is missing. Meanwhile, after all those messages, there is still frustration. After all the messages, the frustration still continues because the end of the frustration, yeah, firstborn, breaking of causes, generational causes, ancestral causes. How can a man in Christ be having generational causes? From where now? You are one generation away. You are of God. God Abel. No generation. No cause. No cause. You are in Christ. From Christ, you. Whatever is in Christ is in you. You see, the unveiling of Christ is the revelation of the identity of the believer. Until Christ is unveiled, the believer's identity cannot be revealed. Why? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. For as he is, so am I. If I can see him, I can see me. If I cannot see him, I cannot see me. Me is revealed in unveiling him. So if the church does not unveil Christ, the believer will never know who he is. So anything can go. The unveiling of Christ. And friends, when you finally see Jesus, you don't look for miracles. No, 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 you don't look for miracles. You know what Jesus said? An evil generation seek for signs. So anybody looking for miracles is evil. Jesus said it. Anybody running around, today you are in one church looking for miracles. Tomorrow you are in another church. Jesus called them an evil generation. sir, And he said, no sign shall be given to them. No sign. Yes, and that's why they're having magic. They're having all kinds of drama, razzmatazz. Having a form of godliness, but no power. And he said, from such, turn away. Am I talking to somebody? Paul said, when I came among you, I desire to know nothing. Save Christ and him crucified. For the preaching of the cross to those that perish is foolishness. But unto us is the power of God. That your faith should not stand in the psychology of man. But in the power of God. Why? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Lift your hands. Shout power. He expounded to them in all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. He said, this is what I was trying to tell you. That all scriptures, from Moses to, to, to the prophets, to the Psalms, I'm the message. Look at John 1.45. Put it up for me. Kayabada. John 1.45. Hey! Forgive me, I feel like running crazy here. Philip, find it Nathaniel. Touch your neighbor, say Nathaniel, Nathaniel. <laughs> and saith unto him, We have found him. Hey. We have found him. Hey. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write Jesus. <laughs> we have found the man who Everything Moses was writing, he was trying to talk about Jesus. The prophets were prophesying. They were trying to talk about Jesus. The Jesus they were trying to talk of, we have found him. Hey. That's why Jesus speaking said, among all that are born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. None. Yet the least in the kingdom is greater than him. Why? The prophets kept saying, a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son. They were all stammering. They were all stammering. Then John the Baptist said, Behold, what they were trying to say, John saw. Hey, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. What they were talking, John saw. What John saw lives in me. Even the mystery. Even 
the mystery. Colossians 1.26. That was hid from ages and from the prophets, which none of them knew. And that mystery is now revealed to his saints, which is Christ in you, the hope. The assurance of salvation. Eternal salvation. The mystery. Isaiah was looking for it. Ezekiel was looking for it. Jeremiah was looking for it. Moses was looking for it. Let me tell you something. If Moses comes here today and Jeremiah, they will enter foundation class. Trust me, they will go to foundation class because 1 Peter 1.10, put it up. God punish the devil. 1 Peter. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired. All of them were inquirers. They were saying, eh, who are these people? Who are we prophesying about? Who are we talking about? After they prophesy, then they will say, but what did I just say? God will say, shut up. Get out. Next. Another prophet will come. He will prophesy. When he said, ah, but what did I just say? When is it going to happen? God will say, shut up. Get out. Next. Because they were inquiring. They were searching. Put it up for me. They were searching diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? Unto us. Next verse. Next verse. Searching what? Or what manner of time? The spirit of Christ, which was in them, this signified. When he testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. They were seekers. All of them were seekers. They were searchers. Oh, we are found in him. We are in him, not of our own righteousness. The grace of God that bringeth salvation. I didn't deserve it. God looked at me and saw my bankruptcy. He saw my destitute state. He saw how fallen I was. And God said, I know you can't, but take it anyhow. They were searching and seeking. And God said to them, put up the next verse for me. God said to them, unto whom it was revealed. That not unto themselves. Elijah, move. Moses, move. David, move. Somebody say, you know, when the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will dance that David dance. David says, what is your problem? I want to dance like you. You want to dance like me. What's wrong with you? Don't dance like me. I want to dance like you. Yeah, I want to dance like you. Because we kept talking these things we never partook. You didn't talk about it, but you're partaking. He says, he said to them, not unto you, not unto them, but unto us, did they minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, which the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire. To look into. All the angels are saying, ah, what is all this? So when we come for service, angels come to gather with their writing papers and their biro. As we are preaching, they say, eh, it's oh, write down, write down. They are taking notes because unto the principalities and powers might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. We are the privileged generation. Hey! Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now that's not the definition of faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Don't look for definitions in the Bible. It's not a dictionary. This is a description of Old Testament faith. This is not our faith. This is Old Testament faith. Look at it. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. They hoped for. They had evidence but they never saw. Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God and never arrived. Even when he came to Canaan, he was still looking for. They had substance, they had evidence, but they never saw. Somebody said, what do you mean? Verse 2. For by it, by that faith, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, the elders. So that's the faith of the elders. That's not for us. 
That's their faith. How do we know it's their faith? Verse 4. Verse 4 of Hebrews 11. Verse 4. By faith, Abel. So that's the faith Abel operated. Abel, Abel. The other one. <laughs> this one has entered Christ. <laughs> Somebody shout yes. By it, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. You know, sometimes when you read the story of Cain and Abel, you won't see faith there until you read the New Testament. Because when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God came down, caught an animal, offered a blood sacrifice and spoke to them. And then I'm sure they transferred it to their children and said to their children, you know, when we sinned against God, the only way we could approach God was through an animal sacrifice. So anytime you want to approach God, you have to come with animal sacrifice. When it was time for Cain and Abel to approach God, Abel brought animal. Cain went and brought the fruit of his labor. He came in his own strength. And when two of them came, Abel said, I cannot approach you on my own. I can only come on the basis of the blood. And Cain said, no, I know myself that whatever I offer will be good enough. And God rejected Cain's offering and accepted Abel's offering because Abel's offering was faith in Christ. Faith in the blood. So by faith, Abel, next verse, next verse, next verse. I'm going somewhere. By faith, Abel, verse 5. By faith, Enoch, that was their faith. Verse, verse 7, 7, 7. By faith, Noah. And if you keep going through the list, you'll just be seeing all the Old Testament people who came by faith. For example, Noah. The faith of Noah was the building of the ark. That ark was a type of Christ. Everything that entered was saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. There is no name under heaven given among men whereby we can be saved except the name of Jesus. Am I preaching here tonight? If you're hearing me shout, I hear, I hear. And they all kept coming by faith. All of them kept coming by faith. Faith in types and shadows. Verse 39 of Hebrews 11. Verse 39. Hey, verse 39. And this all, having obtained a good report, through faith, received not the promise. They didn't get the promise even though they believed because there was a better testament coming. We are the tangible. We are the substance. The reality was going to manifest. The Jesus generation. Then put up the next verse. Verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us. We are better things. I don't want to be like Elijah. I have a better thing here. I don't want to be like Moses. I have better things here. I don't want to be like David. I have better things. God has provided some better thing for us. Put it up for me. That day without us should not be made perfect. We are the perfection of whatever they did. Am I preaching here? If you're hearing, shout, I hear you. Then chapter, chapter, chapter 12, verse 1. Oh, I feel like dancing. Chapter 12, verse 1. We are four. We also are compassed about with great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that doth easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience. Verse 2. Look away. Look away. The Greek, the Greek translation of that, 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 that looking unto. First of all, says look away unto. Look away from Abel. Look away from Abraham. Look away from Isaac. Look away from Moses. Look away from them. Look unto Jesus. The altar. Jesus started the faith walk. And Jesus finished it. So when Abel was coming by faith, Jesus was there. Jesus was there. Because he's the author. He authored it. He authored it, sir. And when he died on the cross... He finished it. So today, in Christ, when we look, we look back. We don't look forward. We look back. We look back. Back to where? By his stripes. We were. He became sin. We are righteous. He was rejected. We are accepted in the beloved. Today, we are not looking forward to something. We are looking backward 
to what he has done for us. Now in Christ, in Christ, you don't try and have faith. When you come to Christ, you come to faith. The moment you enter Jesus, you are in faith. That's why we don't tell believers to believe. You believe, that's why you are a believer. That's your nature. You don't try to believe. You are a believer, that's who you are. You are a believer. That's why you're called a believer. That's who you are. And as a believer, oh, all things are possible, sir. All things are possible. There are no limitations. There are no restrictions. Somebody tell you you can't do it, he's a liar. I can do all things through Christ. Somebody say you can't get there, it's not true. It's not true. In Christ, you can get anywhere. I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. But as your amen will come like thunder. Wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice. Whatever they said you couldn't do before now. I, I submit to you tonight. Under the apostolic oil that is on this altar. Impossibilities are terminated. They are terminated. They are terminated. They are terminated. They are terminated. Ah. You are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. I declare tonight, whatever has been making noise, whether demon, devil, Satan, wherever they are raging, I speak to you under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Every noise silences now. Every wind, every storm, every turbulence, every crisis, and everything making noise around where you are, Whatever God has not planted and every satanic conspiracy having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show of the devil. As your amen will come like thunder, receive victory. Receive manifestation. Receive testimonies. Receive a performance. Lift your hands, shout yes. Both him that sanctify and those that are sanctified, they are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call us brethren. He's our brother, man. He's our brother. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Jesus is your brother. You don't have to come struggling. You come boldly. You come boldly to the throne of grace. You come ready to obtain mercy. I find grace for help. I declare tonight, every area of your life where you're looking for help, where you've been praying for help, where you've been seeking for help, even as the year is rounding up, you desperately need help. As your hands are lifted and your amen is coming like thunder, I command supernatural help released. Receive help in your situation. Receive help for your challenges. Receive help for your struggles. Receive help for your prayers. Receive help for your seekings. Every door that was shut against you, I came to submit to you. You no more need to look for door. Jesus said, I am the door. I open it and no man shut it. I shut it and no man open it. I have said before you, an open door. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder, walk into your open doors. Walk into your open doors. From this night, in this rest convocation, every area where you have been distressed, because you are in Christ, I command you to receive rest. 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 Lift your two hands like a drunken man and blast in tongues. Blast in tongues. I'm not hearing your voices. Pray like a madman. Blast in tongues. Sour in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rise up like an edifice. Higher and higher. Monda, colada, 
Hey! Sataya. Mandre Nanganga. Hila Bojaka. Ereko Daga. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Please lift your two hands and let your amens be coming like thunder as I pray. I declare from this night, by the power of the Holy Ghost, experience manifested rest. Manifested rest. Sickness and disease, get out. High blood pressure, melt out. Sugar, diabetes, get out. Eye disease, be healed. Hearing conditions, be corrected. Heart conditions, be corrected. Bone disease, be healed. Skin disease, be healed. Dental conditions, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Receive supernatural miracles. Supernatural favor. Supernatural opportunities. Supernatural ideas. Supernatural concepts. Supernatural openings. I command well to find its way into your hands supernaturally. 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 That thing you've been trying to start that you couldn't start. Go and start now. You are empowered. You are empowered. You are empowered. You are empowered. And I command every condition around you be made whole. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you believe it, let that amen settle it forever. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and celebrate and rejoice. Rejoice in Jesus. Rejoice in his finished work. Rejoice in what Calvary has made available. Rejoice again. I say rejoice. Listen to me carefully. I want you to get out a seat tonight. Get out a seat. Get out an offering. Your 50,000, 100,000, 25, 10, 5,000. Grab a good offering tonight. We're going to celebrate the finished work of Christ. That's what we're going to do in the next few minutes. We're going to celebrate what Christ has done. We're going to celebrate the fulfillment of all scriptures and prophecies. Get out a good seat. And then lift it and stand up. We'll pray. Then we celebrate. We celebrate the manifestation of the finished work of Calvary. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please, once you grab the seat, stand on your feet. We will stand and celebrate this celebration. And lift up that seat to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Grab the seat and stand. Let's celebrate the champion, the lion, the one in whom we live.